Today we're in Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, where it says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. There's two parts of this verse that we need to talk about, um, and I think we're just going to tackle one of them today, one in the next video. Um, but 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 yeah, the, the question you want that first comes to mind when I read this verse is, is really, um, what is Paul saying right here? When he says, I rejoice in my sufferings. Is Paul some kind of a masochist? I mean, does he de derive some kind of sick pleasure from pain? Uh, what's he saying? I, I think the answer is no. This isn't this isn't a sign that Paul is a masochist. Um, and, and I think when we, get, we begin to understand um, the way in which Paul views suffering, okay, in light of his salvation and eternity, um, then the meaning of this passage actually begins to become kind of beautiful. And, and so the question we need to ask today is, is what does Paul mean? when he says, I rejoice in my sufferings. I think we're going to find some answers here. Um, but I think first it's helpful if we start to understand the context of suffering um, that Paul's referring to here. Because there's lots of ways that people suffer in this world, right? They're not all the same. Um, one of those ways is stupid decisions, right? People um, suffer in life a lot of times just because of stupid decisions. It could be the, their own stupid decisions. It could be the decisions of other people. Um, for instance, it may be that you make a bad business decision. Um, it could be that you make a, a bad investment or you're just a poor with money management. You, you don't take care of, uh, of, of things well. You don't manage your money well, right? And, and, and so you suffer uh, financially. You struggle because when you get your paycheck, you go spend it all on the things you want or, or things that taste good. And then you don't have enough to pay your electricity bill. Your power gets shut off and now you're suffering in the dark. Um, and so, you know, you might suffer for that reason. You might suffer uh, for some something that happens to you physically. Maybe you get in a car accident, right? Um, you're driving too fast. You're looking at your, tel your cell phone while you're, while you're driving down the freeway. You're not paying attention and, and you get in a car accident. Maybe you chose to smoke and for the last 20, 30 years, you've been smoking cigarettes and then you get a bad diagnosis. It could be from overeating. Maybe you eat way too much sugar and you just don't control that and then you have a blood sugar problem. Um, another way could be that you make sinful decisions, right? Um, it could be that you choose to be unfaithful to your spouse. Uh, it could be that you choose to engage in theft or, or, or in murder, uh, armed robbery, where you actually injure someone. It, it could be that you suffer uh, because you choose to put everything else before God or just one thing before God. It's, it's idolatry in your life. Um, a second way that people uh, suffer, a reason for people's suffering, is, is things that you actually don't have any personal control over. And that would be things like natural disasters. There's hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, floods, things that just happen in a broken world that cause suffering in our lives. There's there's wars, okay, that happen. Obviously, we know that there's a horrendous war going on between Gaza, um, in, in Gaza, between Israel and the Palestinian people. And, and, and there's innocent people caught in the crossfire there. Um, and, and there's, you know, suffering, massive suffering, a massive loss of life there. There's a war be between um, Russia and Ukraine. Again, lots of innocent people just caught in the middle and, and they're experiencing the loss of their life, the loss of loved ones, the loss of their livelihoods and their possessions. It's, it's terrible suffering. But but there's a third way and a third reason for uh, the suffering that people um, feel or experience in this life, and that is suffering for the name or the cause of Christ. And maybe that comes because of persecution. Maybe it comes because of um, uh, um, of ridicule because of your faith. Maybe you feel oppression because of your faith, and maybe you experience even martyrdom uh, for your faith. But but the point is, okay, in all of these things, whatever the reason, um, the fact is everyone is going to experience suffering at some point in this world. And in fact, Jesus told us, in this world, you will have tribulation. Of course, he added at the end, take heart, I've overcome the world. You know, So for those of us who are in him, we have that, that we know that our Lord overcomes this world. Um, the Apostle Peter spoke, spoke of this in his first epistle. So in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 16, Peter says this. He says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. He says, but rejoice in so far as you share in Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you're insulted for the name of Christ, you're blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Then he says this, he says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or a meddler. Okay, so, you know, don't, don't there are two different categories of suffering here. He says, yet if anyone does suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God in that name. And so clearly there's a difference between the different kinds of suffering, Christ's suffering versus um, our own stupidity or some thing that's beyond our control. But but uh, there's a difference. Paul in this passage clearly is speaking of this last kind. Um, he says, rejoice 
uh, Peter says, insofar as you share Christ's sufferings. And Paul is referring to suffering for the name of Christ. In that verse, he says, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. Okay, whose sake? The church in Colossae. In fact, later in the verse, he says, for the sake of his body, that is the church. Okay, <clears throat> so we know we know from reading the scriptures that Jesus takes persecution, both persecution and blessing of his church, church very personally. In, in, in um, Matthew, we hear he says, as much as you did it unto the least of these, you did it also unto me. He says even to the other people, as much as you didn't do it unto me, as much as you didn't uh, give, give food to the one who was hungry, as much as you didn't clothe the one who was naked, as much as you didn't uh, visit the one who was sick or, or alone, um, you didn't do that unto me. And so Jesus sees that as the same. If, you, if you've done something for or against him, his body, Body, the church, you've done it for or against him personally, okay? On the road to Damascus, as Paul was traveling to Damascus to persecute the church in Damascus, um, it, it, Jesus uh, knocks him off of his horse, and Paul was going by the name Saul then. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me, okay? So Jesus saw Saul's persecution of the Christian church as persecution of him personally, okay? And so, Paul is saying, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, okay? And in my flesh, I'm filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, for the church. I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, because when he suffers for the sake of Christ's church, it's the same in Christ's eyes as suffering for Christ himself, right? Because that is his body. In another uh, letter Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, Paul talked about some of the things he had experienced. His past life, he had been a Pharisee. Um, he had been someone who was highly esteemed. He had a career that was kind of on the up and up. He was on a real upward tra trajectory, the next rising star in Israel and Judaism. Um, you know, taught, he was taught under the feet of Gamaliel, which was a, one of the famous um, teachers in Jerusalem. And uh, Paul's talking about going through all these lists of achievements, you know, being circumcised on the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. He's a Hebrew of Hebrews. As to, the, as to zeal, you know, a, a persecutor of the church, as to the law, a Pharisee. Um, but then he, then he goes on to say in chapter 3, he says this, but whatever gain I had, okay, so, so what are my, whatever my achievements were, whatever the respect I had, whatever that prestige was, whatever the upward trajectory, so whatever gain I had, I counted as a loss for the sake of Christ. He says, indeed, I count everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He's saying, all the things that I've had in my life that had any value. And we don't know, Paul likely was married when he was a Pharisee. Um, I've heard that that was sort of one of the requirements, that a Pharisee be a married man. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, he may have lost a wife. He lost family members. He lost friends. He lost uh, respect. He lost a name. You know, he he, he lost his career. Um, every All his hopes and dreams and visions for his life up to that point, gone, okay? Uh, but he says, I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of simply knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He said, I, all that stuff is worthless. I, I just count it as a loss because of the surpassing worth of just knowing Jesus, you know. He says, for his sake, for Christ's sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and I count them as rubbish that I, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Okay, so all the things I've had, all the things I've suffered, all the struggles I've had, all of the, you know, he goes through a list, I think in Corinthians, where he says, you know, I've been shipwrecked, I've been beaten, I've been whipped, 30, you know, 40 stripes minus one, uh, I've been left for dead, stoned, you know, imprisoned, um, thirsty, I've been hungry, he lists all these things. And, and he says, so all of that, I just, all of it, it's, it's, I just count it all as a loss. I, it, all I care about is knowing Jesus, right? That, that I may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law as a Pharisee, as one who was the best Pharisee, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God that depends on faith. And he says this, listen, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, becoming like him in death, that I may be by any means possible attained to the resurrection from the dead. Okay, that I may know him. All of it is worthless. I count it all as a loss. It means nothing to me. All the achievement, all the suffering, all the things that I've been through, even any prestige and honor I have now, I count it as nothing, as worthless, as trash, as rubbish, compared to simply knowing Christ, that I just may know him and the power of his resurrection. What does that mean, that power of the resurrection? It means all the suffering, all the things that he faces now. Um, the, the power, what was the power of the resurrection? The power of the resurrection was that Jesus overcame death itself. Okay? He overcame death itself, and all the power of hell could not hold him in the grave. 
Paul saying that I may know him and the power, that same power of that resurrection, okay? Overcoming all of my pride, overcoming all of my pain, overcoming all of my sufferings that I'm experiencing victory, keeping my eyes fixed upon the goal, and I'm not looking to the things of this world, the achievements of this world, um, the prestige and the honor and the respect of the people of this world. I'm looking to Christ. I just want to know him, and the, and, and I, want to, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection to overcome all these obstacles in my life that I may share in his sufferings. Why? Because I just want to identify with him. I want to know know him. I want to know him so closely that I even know his sufferings. I want to suffer with him because he suffered for me. He gave everything that he had for me, and I want to give everything I have back to him. I want to share in his sufferings. I want to become like him in his death that I may by all means possible attain to the resurrection from the dead. And what's that? The resurrection of the dead is that day when Christ returns and gathers us to himself. He makes us like him, and and then he judges the earth, and he makes everything new, the new heavens and the new earth where righteousness dwells. He says, my eyes are fixed there, not on this kingdom, not on the things of this world, not on the the temporary, temporal things of this world that are are destined to fade away and pass away, that that it's all going to burn, and Christ is going to make a new kingdom where righteousness dwells. I'm going to live forever there with him in the presence of the king in the presence of his glory, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that I may by all means attain to the resurrection from the dead. He, he, his vision, his heart, was to pour himself out on the behalf of Christ. And, and to pour himself out on behalf of Christ was to pour himself out on behalf of Christians, right? Of the people of God, of the body of Christ, of the church, okay? So he says... Once again, in our passage, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And I am filling up in my flesh what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church. In the next video, we'll go into what it means, what he means by filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Um, We're not going to touch that now, but we'll go into that in the next video. But for now, um, this, this idea of rejoicing in our sufferings, embracing our sufferings as a means of letting go, of causing our sufferings help us to to pry our fingers off the things of this world, to focus on the kingdom that is to come, to focus on our Savior, to focus on the power of his resurrection and overcoming our own temptation, overcoming our own sin, overcoming our own desire for the things of the world or for other things besides Christ, to, to, to press in through our suffering and let it bring out his glory, that his glory may be revealed in us, in our suffering, right? That we become a picture of Christ to the world as we bear up in suffering and give him the glory as we let go of this world and look on the kingdom that is to come, fixing our eyes on him. Amen? So we'll talk again in the next video.